Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Katekus, and today I'm going to do a long-term review of the Zoom H6. Now, I did a uh, review about this after I just got it some years ago, back in 2017, I think, and uh, I had good thoughts about it and stuff like that. Um, but I've used it for a lot longer now, and there are things that I still think are great about it. It works great as a field recorder um, and a device that I can record multiple inputs into. But there are also some things that aren't so good about it, or one thing in particular that isn't good about it, uh, at least with my case. It's not something that happens with every unit, but it happened with mine, and I will go over that uh, in this review. Now, in a second, I'm going to switch the uh, video around and give you a better view of the device. I'll go over the outside of it, through the menus and things like that, talk about its features. And then for the last part of the review, I'm going to uh, connect the uh, Zoom to the phone uh, using, H uh, uh, using USB, using VHS, uh, using USB, and I will um, show you what it's like using it to play multiple devices like some synthesizers and stuff like that into it uh, to show you how it sounds, okay? So without further ado, let me switch the camera around and give you a view of the outside of the device. Okay, so here we are having a look at the uh, outside of the device. Uh, on it, you've got an SD card right here with uh, the old style SD card slot, so the larger one. Um, I've got an adapter in there uh, to have the small SD card or micro SD card. Um, and I, I believe it comes with that adapter, so you're not like left looking for one. Um, volume right here, your hold and power, uh, your headphone jack, it is a standard uh, 3.5 millimeter or 2.5 millimeter, I don't know what it's called. Um, you've got multiple inputs, uh, inputs right here, so you can see that the style that you can stick the TRS or the FAT headphone style jack in there, uh, mono, each one's mono. Uh, and you can also put a mic in there with an uh, XLR input. Um, you've got those on both sides of the device, so there's four on there. Then you've also got this right here, which is an interchangeable uh, microphone style, and I think it comes with two different styles. One is kind of a ball mic um, used for recording environment, and this one's for uh, uh, this one is a um, I forget what this is called X axis or something like that, but it's basically it's for um, recording stereo sound, uh, and it also has an area effect. So if I were talking on this side, it would sound like it's coming more from the left. If I were to talk on this side, it would sound more like it's coming from the right. Um, you can definitely hear, for example, I use this as a microphone for my computer uh, when I'm talking on Discord and whatnot. And the um, other people that are listening to me can actually hear when I move around the room, it sounds like I'm moving, so it's a very three-dimensional audio effect. It's quite neat. Um, generally speaking, I use this, which comes with it, uh, to kind of soften the sound a bit, otherwise it can be a little bit hard. You can see it's totally covered in lint and cat hair and stuff like that because uh, I've had it for four years and I have lived, and it has lived with me. Um, but I talked about one major downfall or one thing that I don't really like about the device, one bad experience I have. And if you look at the screen here, I'm going to try to get record it. You see around the edges, there's kind of a whiteness. You can't actually see how bad the effect is with my um, phone camera because it's not focusing enough on here to show just how burnt out the uh, sides are. It started slowly. Um, and it was almost immediate, but the thing is, I kind of thought it was like a stylistic thing, like kind of, I don't know, like an old picture frame, just kind of the sides were just soft and rounded a little bit. Uh, so I didn't realize when I had bought it that I had a defective unit. Uh, and since then, over the years uh, of using it, the screen has burned in more and more, uh, and it's very apparent in the menus and whatnot. Uh, so if I, let's see here, let's go to audio interface, if I click on this right here. Uh, and let's do multi-track right there, and what's the last one? I can't even read it. Um, PC, Mac, there we go. Okay, so on here, uh, I can hardly see the effect on the uh, last channel, or channel 4. I wish I could get my camera to show it a bit better. It's not showing, like the screen is a bit more clear than it's showing up in the camera, but not much. It's very white around the edges. Um, for example, on track 4 here, uh, I can't actually see any activity on track four whatsoever. It doesn't look like it's moving. It looks like it's maxed out. Um, that's not very uh, nice. But 
Oh, well, I mean, it is what it is. Um, it still works. I can still use it, and I'm trying to memorize the uh, menu so that I can at least use it as a microphone when the screen fully burns out, if it fully burns out. If it's a heat-related issue, maybe it'll stay hot around there. But I believe it's a screen-related issue, so eventually it will just go completely white. But who knows how many years it's going to take. Um, aside from that issue... As a sound recorder, it sounds absolutely fantastic. Now, I will note, I don't think it's a common issue with the screen. I've looked up this issue on YouTube and Google and all that stuff, and I only found one other video with this issue. So I think it is not a common issue. Um, I believe there's a screen I can get to replace this, but it's such an old device, I don't know if it would be an easy thing to track down. Eh, who knows? It still works. I can still use it. As uh, for everything else... Uh, all of the knobs still work wonderfully. They feel great. They, they have some resistance when they rotate, so they're not like just going up and down uh, easily, and they don't, they don't feel uh, bad at all. They feel quite nice, very comfortable. Um, these right here are to change like what kind of recording you've got, whether like basically to lower the sensitivity for uh, abrasive sounds, I believe. And, uh, you know, all the switches, all the buttons, they all feel really good. They, they click nicely. Um, they work really well. Uh, yeah. So everything about that feels good. Um, I have lost the battery cover. I don't know where it is. God knows how long ago I took it off for whatever reason. Um, that's another complaint that I have about this device is holy smokes, this thing burns through batteries like you wouldn't believe. Uh, that's why I'm using it on USB power right now. Uh, when I plug it into the phone to show you the sound here, I will have to put batteries in there. Uh, to um, like run out on my phone because it can't use my phone battery. And this is something that prohibits me from using it um, commonly to, for example, like when I first got this, my idea was to plug it in through USB to my phone because I often make videos with my phone camera and um, use it to like plug in my synthesizers and stuff like that and uh, make YouTube videos where I'm showing synthesizers and stuff like that. And that's great. Uh, but because it uses the devices or the, the batteries here, it uses that power and not um, like an internal battery or whatever, uh, it is very prohibitive, uh, cost prohibitive um, for one. I mean, I can afford batteries. I can afford to buy lots of batteries. But the other thing I don't like is creating needless waste. Um, so I bought uh, rechargeable batteries for this thing, and it works for about five minutes on a full charge. It is ridiculous how fast it uh, burns through batteries. Uh, I really wish that this thing came with a... Oh, i got to pause this for a sec. Somebody's at the door. Ooh, my coffee just came. <laughs> okay, sorry about the distraction there. Um, so, yeah, I, I wish this thing came with a lithium-ion battery pack that you could charge and, and use. Uh, it'd be so much less waste than buying batteries. Uh, the first batteries I had in here were the Energizer Lithiums, and they lasted a long time. It was fantastic. Uh, however, they're like $20 for a pack of four, uh, so it can be, I mean, I don't know. I would say that the lithium-ion uh, energizer batteries that I bought for this, the amount of time that they lasted in here makes me feel like it was a far better value than um, just regular alkaline batteries that you could buy, because I would imagine that this thing would probably last a very short time on regular lithium batteries. So if you do decide to get this, uh, I highly recommend uh, splurging for lithium-ion batteries. I'm not sure if they have AA lithium-ion rechargeable batteries. That would be even better for this thing. Uh, but yeah, this thing does drink power like there's nothing else. Uh, that said, what you get for the power that you're you're using, um, it is a very fantastic... Um, like, the sound is fantastic. It's It's crystal clear. There's no distortion or anything. This thing records fantastically. Uh, you'll, you will have to adjust your gain and whatnot, uh, depending on distance and angle to whatever you're recording. Um, but once you fine tuned it, uh, yeah, this thing just sounds fantastic. Uh, so let's for the last part of the review. Um, well, no, let's just jump into it right now. Let's go through the menus and stuff. Uh, again, it's not going to come in super clear on uh, this camera with the burn in on the screen, but at least we can go through some of the uh, menu points and see what this thing offers here. So let me just find the menu button. It's been a long time since I used it. It's on the right side. Um, for the menu navigation, you've got a menu button right here, and then you've got a switch right here to go up and down through the menus, and then you click in, like you push it in to, to select it. So 
we'll go into the menu here. Um, you got your low cut right here. So if you go in there, you can put low cut on any of the uh, tracks. So that's basically how this um, system works is you've got all these different, not effects, but um, filters and um, I don't know, uh, what? let's just call it effects because I can't think of the name right now. But you've got different um, parameters. There we go. Parameters that you can put on each channel. Uh, so um, you can put compressor or a limiter on there and you can put it on each channel. So let's put it on channel three. Then you can choose the kind of, uh, kind of compression. Uh, so we put a general compression on there. Go back here. So that's on track three. So when I go out of here and I click on track three, you can actually see on track three, it says comp. So it's telling you that there's a compressor on there. Uh, also for something like if you plug a microphone into here and it requires phantom power, you can go back into the menu here. Uh, you can go into your effects and you can go down to uh, phantom right there. You can turn it on and you can choose the channel, channel three. Can't read that on here. Uh, let's turn on and come out of there by pressing the menu button and we now see a little lightning bolt to tell us that there's phantom power on channel 3. So there is an indicator to tell you what is going on with each channel there. And like I said, there are a lot of different things to go through. Um, you've got your low cut, compression, uh, direct monitor, I don't know what that does, MS RAW monitor, don't know what that does, phantom plug-in power, uh, what does that say? Uh, loopback, uh, mixer, that's so weird how loopback is grayed out. Uh, mixer, VU meter, line out level, MS matrix, and that's it. So you've got all these different things, and some of them have different settings that you can um, adjust even further. But I'm not going to turn that on because I don't want uh, I don't want to mess up my <laughs> recorder. So come out of there, back into here. Okay, so that's enough about the uh, menu settings. Uh, turning on each track for recording is quite simple. Um, you just, tur okay, so you see when I press one, it turns them both on, it's because they're linked. That's one feature I wanted to tell you. Uh, if you wanna unlink them, you just hold them together, I think. Well. Okay, there we go. So each one here, I can turn it on single, or I can link them together like that. So now two and one, or one and two, are linked together. They work as a single channel to create a stereo channel, um, and you can do that. Uh, you've got your stop, play, pause, record, and uh, fast forward and back. Uh, there is a speaker built into here, but it sounds like absolute hot garbage. Uh, if I go into the menu and I go into one of the files that I've made, let's see what I've made here. I can't read anything. Whoops. No. Back. I forget. I forget how to uh, play my uh, stuff here. Goodness gracious. Uh, let's exit out of here, sure. There is a way to play back all of your stuff, but uh, I can't seem to easily find it. Oh, here we go. I can't hear anything. Maybe it's trying to play it through the computer. Oh, there we go. It's very quiet. Okay, so basically speaking, the speaker on here is absolute garbage. It sounds terrible. It's uh, tinny, it's muffled, it's way too quiet. I, I, I kind of don't even know why they put it on here. Like, it is so useless that there's absolutely no use for it. Um, I think they could have done a little bit better in that department. If, if they're going to, I mean, in my opinion, if you're going to, put a feature on your device, then make it a useful feature. And this speaker is just not even useful for anything. Even if you put it out right up to your ear, the sound quality is so absolutely terrible that no matter what you've recorded, it's hard to even discern words or anything. It's, it's quite a terrible speaker. It's unfortunate that they did that. 
Um, anyhow, let's uh, get to the next part of the review where I connect it to the phone and start playing some uh, synthesizers into the, uh, let me get this into focus, uh, play some synthesizers into the inputs and have some talking going at the same time so you can hear how it balances sound and whatnot. Of course, balancing is a lot uh, dependent upon how you've set each gain and stuff like that, but it is possible to set up a really nice recording environment uh, with multiple devices as well as having the ability to talk at the same time, and we're going to explore that in the last part of the review. Okay, see you guys in a second. Okay, so let me show, the, show you the equipment that I'm going to use for the next part of the review to record the sound. Uh, I've got my headphones so that I'm not hearing things coming out of my computer. I've got my Empress Zoya right here, which I'm going to use as a synthesizer. If you don't know, this pedal is bloody awesome. Um, I've got a uh, TRS jack that I'm going to use to hook up the Zoya to the uh, Zoom H6. And last but not least, I'm going to use my computer to record the video and sound. Now, the video on my computer is not very good. I'm just going to warn you about that. Uh, I've got a cat right here to help me out just in case I need it. Um, the video is not very good, but that's not what this is about. It's about the sound. So during that part, I might be out of focus or it might be blurry or it'll be a different resolution. Well, it's not going to change on YouTube, uh, but the sound should be nice and pristine as long as you're playing the video at a high enough quality. Uh, you should hear exactly how it is. I'm going to use the uh, mm, like uh, field mic right here for the audio, uh, for me talking rather. Uh, and then I'm gonna have this thing going into one of these jacks right here so, uh, and play some stuff on here because this thing can work as a synthesizer. So I'm gonna play some notes and stuff and some patches and you'll be able to hear how well this thing uh, plays. Uh, it's worth noting, of course, yes, this thing does record onto the device itself. So I'll be using it as an audio interface and a microphone. Uh, but it also works as a standalone portable recording device and it has like the memory card that you already saw and you can make audio files and everything's pristine. Whatever you hear in this video, the quality that you hear in this video, uh, it records exactly like that into the device. So um, there's no difference between what you record into the device onto the SD card, which you can later export to your computer or whatever. There's no difference between that audio and the audio that you're going to hear through uh, this YouTube video provided there will be a little bit of compression because YouTube likes to do that But it should sound pretty good if you're listening to headphones. It should sound excellent. So let's get to the next part of the review Okay, so here we are on the last part. Um, I have the uh, uh, Zoom H6 hooked up. Uh, I'm using the uh, microphone that looks like this shape uh, I'm using that to talk into, and then I have the uh, Zoya hooked up to input one in order to test it out. Uh, I could do stereo sound, but um, I don't want to unhook more of my synths to get more wires for it, so we're just going to do a test to see how it does for recording uh, talking at the same time as doing sound. So uh, I would say this is an ideal device for uh, doing broadcasts and stuff like that because the microphone does a really good job of recording uh, like talking at the same time as sound. So uh, provided my levels are set properly here, you should be able to hear both at the same time. So let's give it a go. So I'll play some synthesizer. <laughs> sound might be a little bit high compared to the uh, audio. It's turned off right there compared to the audio. But when I start talking, you can hear me quite clearly. Uh, again, provided I have my levels set properly on here. I have checked them a bit um, uh, before recording the video, so I hope I have it right. But I mean, I might hear it differently through my headphones than you do on your computer. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna play, last thing I'm gonna play is something called, um, let's see, what is it called? It is called a melody, and uh, it's a preset on the Empress Zoya. So let's give it a shot here. It's just very sweet. 
So you can hear my uh, voice being recorded at the same time. So I, like I said, with the setup, I've plugged the synth into one of the inputs and I've got the uh, microphone set up. And you can see as I get closer and go over here, if you're using stereo headphones, you will, well, I'm not sure if it'll do this, be like if it'll, um, show the the area effect as it's set up right now because i've set it to stereo mix which mixes both the synthesizer and the uh microphone into the into a left right arrangement um it is possible to set this up as a uh an input with all six inputs on the uh um h6 being recorded separately in a separate uh, separate different tracks so if you're hooked into a a DAW like Ableton or something, you could assign each of the uh, inputs to different tracks and record them all independently. Uh, it's quite nice. My current setup, I just have all of the channels that I'm using being put into a left-right arrangement. So anyway, I hope that gives you a pretty good um, idea of what it's like to use the uh, H6 or what the H6 sounds like. Maybe not to use it, but um, what it sounds like, uh, what it feels like in the hand, what the buttons are like, and stuff like that. Uh, to give you a, uh, I don't know, an educated um, opinion about it. Uh, if you do buy a, an H6, which I do recommend, I, I do think it's a great device. Uh, if you do buy one, if you notice any discoloration around the corners of the screen, uh, either bring it back immediately if it's within the 30 days or whatever, or send it back to Zoom to get a replacement because that is a fault. It isn't some feature like little rounded corners and sweet and, you know, some vignette effect. No, it's a defective screen. So I would highly recommend sending it back. Otherwise, you'd be stuck in my position. I live in China. It's not very easy for me to send things back. I bought this in Canada. I would have to send it back to Canada to get it, like, I don't know, to fix it or whatever. Um, had I known about this issue earlier, obviously I would have exchanged it for another one. Um, but I still would have gone for the Zoom H6, even with this defective screen, if it was the only audio recorder available from... Uh, Sorry, my phone's going off. If it were the only audio recorder available, uh, like from Zoom, and I, it had this issue, I'd still get it because it's still usable. It's just a little bit annoying, um, and there's a little bit like less um, visual information available to me at the edges of the screen. Uh, but it has wonderful sound, and it's definitely worth it in my books. I think I paid 500 Canadian dollars for it, which is like. 350 American dollars now. Uh, I believe the price has gone down since then. If you can find a used one, of course, check the screen. But uh, again, highly recommended. As an input, you've got six inputs that can go into the computer. That interchangeable head on the top uh, can actually be taken off. And there is another one that you can have two more inputs to plug into it. Uh, so you can have six inputs in total. So if you just wanted a, uh, um, an audio input for your computer, I wouldn't recommend this thing. But if you wanted something that you could take around with you and record some interesting sounds and get them very clearly, as well as use it as an audio input, as well as to record like notes into the microphone or whatever, then I highly recommend it. Uh, but again, make sure the screen isn't defective. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review and um, if you guys have any questions, of course, leave them down below. I would enjoy a like and a subscribe if you want to see more content like this or gaming content or whatever is just coming across my mind. This is, channel isn't exclusively audio uh, related, but it's heavily focused on audio gear and uh, music production. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys next time. This is Katakus, out.